welcome to the Cozy Meadow Knits podcast. This is episode 27. My name is Sophie and I am coming to you from the province of New Brunswick that is located in the east coast of Canada where I live with my husband and our two children. We have a daughter who is 14 and our son is 12. And this is a podcast about my knitting adventures. (laughs) So mostly knitting related. Uh, I do some other crafts. Sometimes I sew, Uh, I do like cross stitching, but I haven't done it in a long time. But mostly knitting. Uh, is my real love and passion Uh, and this is a space where I share all of my current whips my recent makes and all of the dream knitting because I am an obsessed knitter and I want to knit everything (laughs) all at once (laughs) Um, so if you are new here welcome and if you are a returning viewer welcome back thank you so much for joining I hope you are cozy and you have a nice project to work on and you have something nice to drink and I guess let's get into the nitty goodness. It's been, it's been a minute, it's been a couple of months I think that I've last recorded. I think I recorded in November, Uh, but November and December have been a blur. Um, I can get into it a little bit more in the life talk at the end, but basically life was very crazy, just crazy, (laughs) all good, Uh, yeah, Um, work, I had this big, big project and a deadline of December 12th, so November and December, I was very, very stressed out. Um, I admit it, I was overwhelmed, uh, and life, and the kids, and sports, it just took a lot out of me, so that's why it's been such a long time since I've last recorded, but I have, I did find time to knit in between, that was one of the things that was keeping me insane, not insane, (laughs) that was keeping me sane. Um, and yeah, I'm just really grateful that I still had that craft to go to and it would give me a little bit of joy in my life because yeah, work took a a big chunk out of my life on those two months. Anywho, I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about knitting. So I guess I'll start with wishing you guys, wishing everyone a very happy 2024. I hope this year is full of yarn and goodness and health and um, happiness for everyone. And um, so the first finished object that I have is what I am wearing today. It is called the Field Sweater and I finished it. (laughs) I'm so, so happy. Um, Okay, so I guess I'll get up and show you guys how it fits. I'm going to move the chair. It might make some noise. I apologize. I'm just going to scoot over. And this is my field sweater. It is a sweater by Camilla Vad. Uh, It's a very popular sweater right now on Ravelry. A lot of people have already knit this. Um, I fell in love with this yoke as soon as I saw it on um, the very first day it was released and it is so so good so this is the yoke it is called um, she calls it grains it they're basically little cables and I will show you the back really quickly it goes around and if I can't really show you, can I show you? I don't know. Just the length of it. Okay, yeah. So this is how I finished it. This is the length. Um, yeah. So I love it. Let me sit down and let's talk about it some more. I'm so sorry for the noise. Okay. Is this good? Good. Okay. Yes. The field sweater. It was, it was, (laughs) 
It was a joy to knit. I am going to say it was a joy to knit. It was a lot of knitting though. Uh, it's not necessarily hard. Um, the uh, little grains are made with cables and uh, but it's not overly complicated but I did have some help. Uh, Nancy uh, from Knit Sip Happy, she has a podcast, she's one of my dear friends and uh, she knit this first and I was obsessed and I wanted to cast on right away. She had told me that in the pattern, the grain stitch, um, not uh, some of the instructions maybe were a little bit hard to understand. Uh, so when I dove into the sweater, I already knew this and I went and I searched up on YouTube for if there was any tutorials on how to do the grain stitch. And there was. I found two tutorials. I will try to link them down. I think I did on my last podcast as well. Um, but yeah, as soon as I watched that video uh, and I read the pattern as well, it made sense to me and I didn't find it overly difficult. The only thing uh, that I can say for the grain stitch is if you do attempt this sweater, uh, be loose when you're doing, you're doing some wraps and stuff. When you do the grain stitch, just make sure to uh, do it loosely. Yeah, because you have, when you go back and you try to knit the cables, you need some give. So I knew this going into it. Nancy had told me that little tip and that helped and watching those two videos, it helped as well. Um, as for modifications, the, the yoke I did exactly as pattern. Um, the neckline, there are two different necklines. The length of the ribbing um, in, the, in the pattern and I can't remember how many rows I did. I put all of my details in my Ravelry page, will, which will be linked down below. Anything that I'm going to talk about, um, I will have linked down below this video. Um, if you see, there's a little arrow that points down under the video. And if you click on there, you should see some show notes um, where to find me, which is on Ravelry. Um, and Instagram as Cozy Meadow Knits and um, Ravelry, yeah, that's how you can find me there. Um, anyway, so all of the information will be down below and in my project pages. If there's anything that I forget to link down and you have a question, please let me know. Uh, put a question down or reach out to me and uh, I will try to get that answered for you. Uh, okay, so modifications. I did, I think I did in between. So in my project page, you will see how many rows I did for this. I can't remember. Um, the other modification, I guess, I knit to where I felt it was comfortable on my body as the length. Um, and also for the sleeve, I followed the sleeve decreases until I was at the length that I liked. I also put that into my notes and um, and the ribbing detail as well on or the ribbing length on the uh, sleeves and the hem as well is listed in my project page. But that's about it. Um, yeah, so I kept trying it on. I kept trying on the yoke to see where I was and where I wanted to divide for sleeves. Um, so yeah. I'm in love with it. I really like it. Uh, there are numerous versions out there um, on Ravelry if you want to go take a look. Um, again, it's not overly hard. It is a lot of knitting. It's definitely a lot, a lot of knitting. It is fun at times. <laughs> but by the end of the grains, I was really happy that I was done because then I could just go and knit, knit, knit and just watch TV and not pay attention really to what I'm doing. Um, yarn. Uh, the yarn that I used, oh, I have a ball band right here. Sorry. I have, it's from Twisted Willow Yarn. 
and this is a local dyer um, in New Brunswick and it is uh, what I used is it's called cobblestone DK and it's 75% BFL 25% Masham it's non superwash and the color is Venus and it has this little heather to it um, I was in love with the color it's a little bit rustic uh, but for me itch factor is I have a very high tolerance uh, so I can wear uh, Cascade 220 next to skin and this is next to skin for me it's fine um, but yeah I really like the effect that it gave with the grains they pop out um, it's a great pattern it's a great yarn and um, that is my field sweater so that's the first finished object I have a couple of other finished objects but they were gifts uh, I did do I, I will put in some pictures uh, I did two pairs of coastal drift mittens actually they weren't I didn't do the mittens I did coast I used the pattern for the coastal drift mittens and uh, tweaked it to fingerless gloves so I will put in a picture here um, I gave them to uh, our team man hockey team manager um, she's amazing she I don't know how she organizes everything in tournaments and stuff my son is in hockey and um, so I thought I would whip up a pair for her um, some black ones I used leftovers from um, previous projects so uh, so I have two pairs both pairs I used uh, a fingering weight yarn held with mohair um, the other pair I gave to my sister for Christmas and what else can I say about them so basically how I did the fingerless mitt um, I cast on exactly the same sound uh, the same amount of stitches for follow the pattern and I follow the pattern for the thumb kind of like the gusset increases and up to here and when I saw that they were long enough I did some ribbing and then I cast off and I just did some I think I cast off on the thumb with just a uh, stockinette stitch I have details in one of my projects in Ravelry it's the black pair and if you want any details it will be in there um, on how many rounds I did of ribbing on top and where I stopped uh, but that's basically it uh, for those two pairs sorry I don't have to show them but I do have a couple of pictures they're not the best but I do have some pictures the other pattern or the other finished object was another gift knit and it was a big one I have video I don't know if I'll put it in but I have video and I also have a picture of the Miriam Ruana and this was a gift for my co-worker uh, back in September when I saw this pattern was released um, they had kits on Lion Brand and I jumped on it because when I saw it when I saw this contraption thing blanket blanket it's amazing um, I was really excited and I bought two kits to make for myself and for my co-worker because we are always freezing at work <laughs> uh, so yeah uh, I finished hers first I wanted to make it for a Christmas gift and I made it on time um, it was a push but I did get it done and I'm so happy she absolutely loved it I took pictures and a video of it um, in the morning before gifting it to her um, at work uh, she is not a hugger and she gave me a big hug because <laughs> she knows I tell everyone if you get anything knitted from me it means I really love you <laughs> and I do I love her so much we've been through a lot at work so she totally deserved it 
And as soon as I was finished with her gift, I cast on mine because I'm super excited. So I'll show you that in my whip. But again, the, it's the Miriam Ruana and it is by, oh, I wrote it down somewhere. Uh, oh yes, it's by Vanessa Coscarelli, Vanessa Coscarelli Black. And um, she will be linked down below and everything. Um, the size that I did for my coworker is the size large. There are three sizes small, medium, and large. So I did that one, and that one I used almond tweed for the color, and it, it's, I'll show you the ball band of mine. So it's called, the yarn that I used for hers and mine, hers is a different color, but it's Basic Stitch, and it's by Lion Brand. And I bought this because it's, it says it's anti-pilling. So I cannot vouch for that. I have no idea how it's going to wear and, um, but I was really intrigued about the anti-pilling. I was, I hope it works. Uh, so yeah, so I've just started working on mine. Um, the color that I have for mine is this just solid gray color. And I think, I don't know, it's a hundred percent acrylic. And so it's machine washable. And um, yeah, so I bought two kits for this. Uh, so I can start to show, I have not much to show on mine, um, but I will show you anyways, because I did start it. This is all I have. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is what I have, this is the right side. So basically, Basically, you're knitting two panels. You're gonna knit two panels and put them on hold, and then you knit the back panel. So this is the first panel, and both panels, front panels, are identical. So the pattern is super easy to follow. Um, mostly, you, there is purling in the middle. Right now, it's garter, um, but after that, in the body of it, it's uh, stuck in its stitch. So you're knitting across and you're going to be purling back. But it's large yarn. Uh, purling is not an issue for me. So um, it's totally doable. There are some lace details. The pattern is very repetitive. So it's basically, I find it's really easy to pick up and just watch TV and work on it a little bit, which is what I really enjoy. I'm always gonna have this project when I have no brain power, I can just go back to it and um, knit on that if I do not have any brain space to think, <laughs> but I still want to knit. So that's my Miriam Ruana. I think that is all I have to say about it. Uh, I am making size medium for myself but I do, because that's the kit that I bought for myself. Um, the large was nice and cozy, so I'm hoping the medium is going to turn out the same. I think the only difference was I got an extra skein in for the large. So hopefully it's still warm and cozy. I can't wait to have it, but it's going to be something that I'm going to pick up throughout and there's no rush, there's no dead, deadline, but I am excited to have it. So I did have to go up a needle size and I cannot, I don't have, oh, I think I can see. I, no, I can't. Uh, yes, okay, I'm on 6.5. I think it's calling for a six millimeter needle and I went to 6.5 to get gauge and that's it. For the Miriam Ruana, that's my first whip. The second whip, oh la la. The second whip is one of my favorites right now. It is housed in, I guess, an acquisition. I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. It's housed in this beautiful, beautiful bag from Yellow Petal Handmade. Isn't it nice? I'm a sucker for a good bag. Anyway, uh, she had a sale, of course. I say that every time. 
Um, and I absolutely love this pattern, this fabric. Um, there's pockets on the outside, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't have anything that I can jam into it, but it has pockets on the inside. It's so well finished. It's so well tailored. Um, and on the other side as well. And then just the inside. Anyway, she will be linked down below. I have many, many bags of Penelope. She's so awesome. And she's in Nova Scotia. So, so my project that is in here is the Zwig. Zwig? I don't know if I'm saying that right. The Zwig uh, sweater by Caitlin Hunter. And this was something that I worked on during the holidays and I was obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed so much. Okay, so this is a sweater. I can show you a picture um, of what it looks like when it's finished. Um, ever since I saw, well, I've seen this. This is a very popular sweater as well. A lot of people have knit it. Um, I saw Leanne from the Nitty Stew. Uh, she knit it. I already said this on my last episode, but as soon as I saw hers, I was absolutely in love with it and I knew I wanted one. So I finally got time to look for some yarn and I am using yarn that are that is from my stash. The main color is called Rusty Maroon and it is by Alley Cat Yarns and I had a ball band. Of course I don't see it right now but it's by Alley Cat Yarns and I had bought three I think I bought three skeins of this to make a t-shirt and um, I had casted that on and I am ripping that back it was the Mount Pleasant by Pippin Pin which is absolutely lovely and I'm a little bit sad that I'm going to rip it out but it's been a while and I really don't think that will be actually flattering on me and that's why I haven't picked it up again and the yarn is just too beautiful to be sitting there so I was super happy to find that and to repurpose this yarn. So the Rusty Maroon will be the main color so and then this gorgeous gorgeous contrast color is by Yarn Indulgences and she's a local dyer in New Brunswick. And the, I had the ball band of this too. Oh, no, is this it? Is it? Yes, it is. Okay. It is called Old Rose. And it is a yarn that I picked up at a fiber festival in Florenceville in uh, last spring. And the contents of it it's called the Z BFL sock and it's 80% BFL wool and 20% nylon and I absolutely these two colors together are just just amazing and I'm so happy because this was a really really special skein I just absolutely love the colors and I am so happy that I am able to put it in a sweater and to showcase so the pattern is knit bottom, uh, not bottom up, top down. You start with some ribbing and then you do some increases and there are short rows in the back. And then you go, you start into a little bit of color work and then you get into some lovely lace. I don't know if I can show you a little bit better. I don't know, maybe like this. So the lace will open up. It kind of looks like a hot mess right now, but when I block this, the lace will all open up. It's, uh, there's a little bit of cabling. Um, there's some lace and twisted stretches. It's actually really, really fun to knit up. I know. I know it's it looks complicated but really it isn't the thing that I enjoyed the most was that the lace repeats 
are really small. So you're doing the repeats. I think they were about, I don't know, this is not the number of the repeats uh, of the stitches, but let's say it's 14. I think it was less than that, but I hope it's not. Anyways, it doesn't give away much, but just saying that it's not a lot of stitches. So you're always doing the same 14 stitches around in a row. So it's after doing a couple of repeats, you're like, oh yeah, okay, this is what I'm doing. And then I would just do it the whole way. Um, yeah, so I thought it was really easy to knit because the stitch repeat was actually very memorable and it was small. The only tip that I can give you for this is that put stitch markers on each lace, between each lace repeats and you're golden, really. Um, you'll notice right away if you are off or if you need to tweak. As well, there's a lot of lace in here, so I did I did mess up uh, a few times, but I totally, I totally fudged it. And you will not be able to see where I did fudge some of the stuff. So it's very forgiving, but um, that I can say, and because of those quick repeats, I don't know, I was addicted and I would do I would do a couple of rows. It is a lot of knitting, so you have to concentrate. Uh, you have you have to concentrate. You have to pay attention to what you're doing. But um, I would do a couple of rows a night and then set it aside. If it was after that, I had too much. Um, I would knit on another project. But just doing that, it kept growing and growing, and I was so excited to get it done. And I'm excited. I'm just excited. <laughs> I get really excited about projects and yarn. And then after that, you go into um, some color work, which is super, super easy. And I think I can flash you my floats. These are on, these are super small um, floats, you color change. So, and I think I did it really well because I am usually super tight. I'm a super tight knitter and especially when I'm doing um, color work uh, when I'm doing I'm an English thrower yeah I'm an English knitter for sure I don't throw I think I think I flick I don't because I don't I don't know anyways I think I'm a flicker I'm not sure <laughs> but um, yeah so when I do color work I do uh, continental and English and it goes pretty fast but I'm very tight so when I did the color work I would do knit a couple of stitches and then I would just kind of stretch it a little bit on the cord and then would do and I did that and I find that it really isn't it really isn't that tight so I'm really excited I'm really impressed with myself <laughs> I think I'm growing as a knitter uh, anyway, so this is the Zweig sweater. I am in love with it. Um, the size that I'm making is size four. And so yeah, so I'm almost at the sleeve separation. And then on the body, it's all, there's little cables. There's a little cable detail all over on the body. And yes, those might be a little bit tedious to make, but I think the end result is so, so lovely. I'm just really excited to knit on it more. Anyway, we are actually, there's a couple of us that are a couple of knitters that are knitting it. Um, Manon from La Violette uh, Knits. She is making one. Uh, she, I think she's completed the yoke as well. Uh, Nancy from Knits It Happy. Um, Who else? There's uh, Rochelle. We have like other knit, uh, Rochelle and Leanne. Um, we are Instagram friends. And uh, yeah, so it's really fun. And we're just cheering each other along. Uh, so that's my Zweig sweater. And I think that's it for that one. The other whip that I have, I have two more whips. Um, 
let's do, I'll just do this one. This one's gonna be a really quick, it's just a vanilla sock. So during the holidays, I had this gorgeous skein of saw, uh, skein, is it a skein or is it a hank? It's a skein, yes, it's a skein. I'm getting confused, a hank, am I wrong? I'm, I always say things, I don't always say things wrong on here, but sometimes I am mistaken. <laughs> I think this is a hank, I'm not even sure. Anyways, I know you're all gonna tell me what is a skein and what is a hank. I think this is, I don't know. This is yarn <laughs> and um, I absolutely loved it. it I got it um, when my local yarn shop was closing and I just absolutely loved the little Stellina in it and there's my hair and um, the colors and I kept eyeing this yarn all through the holidays but I couldn't knit on it because I had to finish the gift knits first so after Christmas I could finally start using it and so I started a vanilla sock it is a top down I am definitely team cuff down I have only made one sock toe up and um, yeah I'm definitely cuff down girl so I started with some ribbing two by two rib uh, I'm not even sure if I have a project for this on Ravelry, but I will. I will add one. So I did two by two ribs. I think I uh, cast on 68 stitches. I am on US, uh, not US, I am on 2.5 millimeter needles on the little <laughs> nine inch circulars. Uh, these are fairly new to me. I didn't think I would like it. It's not my favorite, but it is actually kind of nice when you're doing vanilla socks. Um, so I'm gonna knit, I've already, I've put stitch markers to count my rows. Um, so every 10 row, I put a little stitch marker. It's just gonna tell me how many rows I've done. I think I'm gonna do like a 70, it's gonna be quite a long sock. So I'm gonna do 70 rounds and then I'm gonna do a slip stitch heel and gusset because that's basically all I've ever done, I think. And I love the fit. So stay tuned for more. I'm only picking this up when um, maybe in the car, I'm gonna stash it, I think, in the car and for an emergency knit situation. <laughs> We all have those projects so oh yeah so I am using this yarn but the cuff I actually used another skein I have this is your I don't know I don't have the ball band or do I I think I do oh my past self was really smart okay this is what it is the it's this this is the yarn. I thought it was by, no, I'm mistaken. Yeah, anyway, this is the yarn that I'm using for the main color and I don't have the ball band for the other one. But it, anyways, it's just sock yarn that I'm using. So this is what I'm gonna do, the cuff, the heel and the toe. And next year, I'll have a Christmas sock. Hopefully, I'm done by then. <laughs> I'm sure I will. So that's a whip. And then my last whip. Oh, it's good. It's a good one. I don't have much on it yet, but in December, this is going to be an acquisition too. So in December, we had a hockey tournament and it was in PI and um, it was really really close to Fleece and Harmony which is a yarn store on PI in Belfast and we were playing in an arena that was 20 minutes from Belfast so yeah I had about 10 minutes in the store when we went, oh, 
oh this is me my skin is really sensitive it, that doesn't itch or hurt or anything but that's just because I kind of like I just have to like scratch myself like that not even and I turn red anyway I'm sorry that's not very nice to look at um, yeah so in PI for a hockey tournament, I dropped my husband and my son at the arena because they have to be there an hour early. So I dropped them off, drove 20 minutes to the yarn shop, went in, and I was basically like just trying to get everything in. I had no idea what I wanted, but I knew I wanted to get one skein at least of something, something special. Yeah. So... I was looking around and I talked to the owner, Kim. She's awesome, she's lovely. And um, I had just seen them in October at the PEI Fiber Fest, which was amazing and so much fun. Uh, so I got to chat with her. And as we were chatting, I saw this. <laughs> there's a white speck in there. I saw this. So this, there's another white speck on there. I have like Christmas, I took down my Christmas decorations and um, it was very sad. I'm still very sad about it just because I miss the mini lights. But um, anyway, back to the yarn. Uh, that's because that's why I have sparkles and stuff all over the place. Uh, so I got this Fleece and Harmony. This is Selkirk Worsted and it's the color Blueberry preserves so Kim was standing here and I was like talking to her and like the yarn was like here <laughs> and I'm like talking to her at the same time and I'm like okay yeah and I kept grabbing and I'm like I need this this is what I want because I only had 10 minutes in the store I knew I had to go and drive back really quickly to catch the game before the game started because I have to ring the cowbell anyway if you're a hockey parent, you understand. Um, so anyway, I grabbed five skeins. I had told Nancy and other people that I wasn't going to... That's really red. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, so I told them that I wouldn't get a sweater's quantity. I totally did. <laughs> and this is what I decided to do with it. This is going to be, I'm going to put a picture up first so you can kind of get a um, idea of what it is. It is called the Cinnabar Sweater and it's by Maven Crafted. I have made a t-shirt uh, from Maven Crafted in the spring and I absolutely adore it. And the Cinnabar is very similar to that t-shirt. Um, the only difference, well, I, I'm not sure if that's the only difference in the construction, but it's there's raglan increases. Um, so I thought that sweater was really nice. Um, I will show you two pictures of it. So the first picture is what you're going to see on Ravelry as a first picture. It's a cropped version and it has bell sleeves. Um, this pattern has options. So in the pattern, um, there's actually an option for straight, um, a straight body, and there's one with, um, yeah, with a straight body, and there's one with uh, more of a curved body. I don't know, what, what am I trying to say? <laughs> anyway, yeah, so that, and there's, so there's two options for that. I am going to do it as long as I can. Um, I have five skeins of this beautiful, beautiful um, blueberry preserve yarn. And this is what I have. This is where I'm at. So I am not yet where I'm gonna split for sleeves, but I am on the last repeat right now of a certain section anyways i haven't read um forward in the pattern but yeah so this is the color 
Um, it went really, really gray in my house right now. So hopefully the lighting is not too, too bad. I have my ring light, but yeah, it's pretty true to color. It is so, so juicy. It looks exactly like a smushed blueberry. <laughs> um, it has like, kind of like a, sh there's no sheen to it, but it has this kind of like halo that is like a darker purple and then this maroon i don't it looks exactly like a smushed blueberry like excellent color uh yeah so i am not alternating skeins and i think the variants i think this was a perfect pattern for this yarn because there's some variants in it but it's super light and you do some there is purling uh, but it's only for one row so you purl and then you go into some more stockinette stitch and then you purl again and that's basically it that's basically the whole sweater so I am not going to do the cropped version it's going to be longer and I am going to do also a fitted sleeve which there are instructions in the pattern as well for that so it's a very well written pattern and you have options so that's always great to have uh yeah so i'm really excited about this one too this will knit up a little bit quicker i think because it's worsted weight yarn i'm really excited about it and i love the color so i will have fleece and harmony uh linked down below as well and that was an acquisition that's it for whips and that was my two acquisitions that I had I had more acquisitions <laughs> who am I kidding uh, but it's been so long and um, yeah I've been pretty good except for that but it's going to be a fabulous sweater so I'm totally okay with that uh, so future knitting future knitting I have one thing that I want to, I want to knit all of it I want to knit everything but one thing that I'm really excited about is a knit along that is hosted by Danelle from the novel knit girl podcast I will have her link down below if you like reading and knitting um, she Danelle has a super lovely podcast um, she reviews books at the end and she talks about knitting in the beginning she knits garments socks scarves she has a wide variety of projects and she just seems like a really kind down-to-earth person that I totally relate to so I love watching her podcast and I was so excited when she uh, announced I think back in November I think that she was going to host a knit along uh, this year and it's going to be in it's a knit along uh, where you can use some book themed yarn or book themed pattern and um, and reading a book they don't have to be all related together. I am, I'm not sure of all of the rules, but I know that she's hosting that and I will link her podcast down below and um, you can find the information in her latest um, show notes of her last video. So I was already excited about this before Christmas. So during Christmas, I got a gift from my sister-in-law my sister-in-law she is like the best gift giver Ugh, she just pays attention <laughs> and she knows what everybody likes and she finds I don't know how she does it but anyway she has a knack for buying gifts for people so she bought me a book a romance novel I've never read this I but I went to go see um, some reviews and I it's totally totally my jam so it's a book and it's a book it's called not again they're knitting oh my god so I read just a little bit I didn't start reading it but I read the little blurb on, on the back so basically this is the second book of a series and um, it's 
their two brothers, I think I, I, I think I have that right. Their two brothers that their mother owned a uh, yarn shop and they're continuing it. And uh, so I guess they knit. And this is a love story. He uh, this I think this one is um, he had a crush on a girl in high school and that's how it goes. I'm so excited. <laughs> I think this was like the best gift of the whole well the best gift I'm not gonna say that but it was pretty good it was pretty good I loved all the gifts that I received but um, this was pretty good <laughs> she said she saw it at the dollar store she is always at the Dollarama and um, she finds the best stuff and the best deals anyway so she was all excited when she saw it, it was about knitting so she I got this and she also gave me a yellow petal handmade um, bookmark and it's a little it's a little sheep that's knitting anyway so how that works you just put it like this and it keeps your page they're awesome Penelope has a whole bunch I am not sponsored by anyone <laughs> I just really like her projects and her pro her products. So anyway, so I'm excited about this. This is totally, totally for the knit along that I'm going to participate in. And I've already shown this, but this is the yarn that I am going to use. It's by Yarn Indulgences. And I bought this in PEI at the Fiber Fest. And the color is called a library. So I'm so excited. It's book themed yarn. It's called library. How perfect is that? And look, I'm so excited about this because I've been wanting to cast on something with this, but it's so special and because the colors are just like amazingly yummy. So I'm going to make a sock and it's going to be, I'm so excited. <laughs> Do I look crazy to you guys? Oh my God. Um, I am going to be making their Hermione uh, everyday sock. I'll put up a picture. It's a free pattern. Tons of people have knit this. I have never knit it before. Um, so it has like this little, I think, pearl bump stitches texture. So I think it'll be really great with this yarn. And I have options. I'm going to do like a cuff with either striping anyways and I like kind of saw these colors they're not all going to be in the sock but I'm gonna choose pick and choose one of these or two to add to the sock maybe do a stripe on the cuff and then do heels and toes I don't know I'm excited <laughs> I'm so excited so I got a book theme uh, pattern yarn and book it doesn't have to be all that themed but anyway I'm excited so that's my little excitement in my life right now <laughs> um, yeah so this one has been kind of long and I still have that red dot oh my goodness that's gonna drive me nuts uh, okay the last thing that I will show I think it's the last thing I gotta look at my notes this is not an acquisition, but this was a gift that I got in the mail from a lovely and so sweet viewer. And she made the, she makes these. <laughs> this is a little snowman. I shared it on Instagram, but look at it. It is so cute, Nadine. I love it so, so much. Um, so I think it has already my hair in it too. <laughs> Uh, but the hat, she knit the hat, made a little pom-pom, and it's knitting, it's felted. She felt, she felt it, and it's knitting its own little scarf. It is adorable. Thank you so much. I had to show it off because it's amazing. Um, yeah, so I love it so much. I'm going to keep this out, even if my Christmas decor is out, it's going to it's going on my little uh, knitting desk besides me. So that's super cute. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for the Nitty Talk. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode. 
Hi. Um, Sophie from the future, in a true Sophie fashion, I completely forgot to pick winners for the giveaway that I was hosting, um, that I announced on last episode for the Coastal Drift Mittens for some yarn, and I also had a few patterns to gift out. Uh, I did not pick winners yet. I am so, so sorry. It completely... I completely forgot about it and uh, what I'm gonna do is this week I will sit down pick some winners and do a little video it'll be like I don't know five ten minutes not even ten minutes why am I saying ten minutes it'll be like five minutes and just to announce the winners I will also pick another winner from a previous episode um, I was gifting away a skein of yarn from a sweet skein of mine and the winner did not contact me and I think that was in like September or something so I never got back um, word from the winner so I will redraw and announce the winner on that same video that I will post hopefully this week and I'm so sorry for the wait uh, but definitely will pick some winners. Okay, thank you so much for understanding. The last thing that I will say, I think, let me sh look at my notes. I always share a recipe and I have one to share. I think uh, future cast on. Yeah, no, I think I talked about everything. Yes. So the recipe that I'm going to share this time, it's definitely comfort food. It is nothing fancy. But we are busy and this is an awesome recipe to do on, uh, it's a quick recipe and it's super yummy uh, for supper. It's just macaroni and hamburger. I know that doesn't sound that great, but uh, this recipe is just amazing and it calls for I think that the reason why it's so good, it's the sauce is just made with um, some beef broth and some tomato paste. Beef broth, tomato paste, I think there's chili powder that goes in, I'm not sure. Either that or papri paprika. Uh, but it's a really simple recipe and it turns out delicious. I know. Uh, nothing fancy total comfort food. Um, I think it calls for like cheese. I know it does call for cheese I don't know if it calls for like two cups of shredded cheese you put in there I have made it with only one cup of cheese and it's still delicious. It's great for leftovers um, My daughter and my husband love it my son. I don't know why he doesn't really like pasta so but I still make it every couple of weeks just because it's so yummy quick and great for leftovers it's not my own recipe something I found on Pinterest so I will add that below um, if you do make it I hope you enjoy um, I think I think that's pretty much it for now it's already a little bit long uh, of a podcast it always is um, I'm not gonna apologize I hope you enjoyed um oh yeah life stuff <laughs> uh i've sprinkled the life stuff throughout really um so yeah uh november and december were super stressful we had a lot of the stress was from work it was i'm gonna blame work because it really was there was this crazy crazy project the deadline was december 12th i don't think i will ever forget that date um, we kept being told that this is the biggest project of the year. A lot of eyes are on this, on this. And so um, I don't think I've ever mentioned it, but what I do for work is I'm a quality assurance tester. So I test software. Um, anyway, so we had this big software project and I was lead, the test lead of it, so I had six other testers with me. I just had to make sure that we meet the date, that everything was working, there were no issues, because when you're doing software testing, you're kind of like the last, the last 
station of like a production line, you're like the last stop. And we have to make sure that everything is good and everything is okay and there are no issues and yada yada. I was so overwhelmed. Oh my goodness. I knew like the date couldn't budge and everything. Anyway, we made it. Uh, we counted the days and um, we actually made it. And after that, I took a few days off from work and uh, I also had Christmas, between Christmas and um, New Year off, which was so great. We stayed, I stayed in this house as much as I could. I stayed in my PJs. We did go shopping. Uh, I took my daughter shopping. Um, we also went to a ceramics to paint ceramics, me and my daughter. We, um, my son had a hockey game, so we went to that. It was just really uh, day by day. Uh, we would go out to eat at a restaurant. And so it was very, very laid back. And I really, really needed that. <laughs> so yeah, the hustle and bustle. We had tournaments. My son is in hockey and my daughter is in volleyball. So we had tournaments every weekend in November and the first couple of weeks of December as well. So. Thank goodness my husband really helped with the Christmas gifts. Um, yeah, so we had lists and we ordered a lot of stuff from Amazon. So he was kind of like taking care of that as I was freaking out about everything else. But yeah, it worked out. It is over. Um, I'm really sad about taking down my Christmas decorations, but that's mostly because I really enjoyed the mini lights everywhere. So I did keep one tree up and it's white and uh, I think I showed it in the intro um, yeah and I put some pink I'm not a Valentine's person at all we don't celebrate we don't do much we might buy each other chocolates just because it's an excuse to have chocolates <laughs> uh, but yeah so I totally um, decorated it with some pink yarn and I think it looks pretty awesome actually so I'm gonna be able to still light that up and not feel bad anyway that's my little joy um, it's getting really really dark so I'm going to cut this here I hope I hope you are well uh, be kind to yourself listen to your body listen to your mind and um, if you need that time you take that time and um, be kind to others be kind to yourself Let's have a really great 2024 filled with love and yarn and um, yeah, all the projects. I hope to see you soon. Thank you so, so much for watching. Um, if you liked, please like and subscribe. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. I'm just really happy to have come back and spend some time with you and um, I'll see you next time. Bye.